Something else really interesting from special relativity, other than time dilation, is length contraction. That's what we're learning about now. So the length of fast moving objects, they're going to seem to shrink or contract relative to someone on Earth. So just like before, like when time seems to have sort of changed uh, for you on your spaceship compared to people on Earth, well, in that same way, uh, or at least in a similar way, length is going to seem to contract. In other words, if you're sitting on your spaceship, you're not going to feel anything weird. Okay, same with the time dilation. I didn't mention that before, but you're on your ship. If you're, you know, you're doing your time dilation calculations, you on your ship, if you had a watch, uh, you wouldn't notice anything weird about the time. Everything would be fine for you. You would just think that everyone else seemed to have aged faster than you did. Just like if you're in your spaceship, it's not that you're going to shrink. You know, everything's going to seem fine to you. You could measure your spaceship as a certain length. Let's say I measure my spaceship as like 100 meters long. Uh, nothing's going to be weird about that. It just seems, though, that people on Earth who are going to watch you fly by, it's going to seem like you're actually shorter than you really are. Again, it's a relative effect. That's why it's relativity. So the length of a fast moving object, uh, that's going to be uh, really important here. So we're going to talk about L0. L0 is going to be the length measured by one for whom the object is at rest. So that's going to be called the proper length. Uh, then obviously then the other length is the one measured by someone who the object isn't at rest. And of course we still have uh, gamma, which is that gamma factor again, don't forget, or you can always look it up, it's V squared, C squared. This is a Lorentz factor here. So in this case, let's maybe do an example. Uh, I like this picture right here. It actually shows you, you know, if you were, use the word present and future, and you, could, and, you know, you had your V is zero. But then as you go closer and closer to the speed of light, you know, the length would appear to contract. See, so you'd seem like you're shorter. Keep in mind, if you're in your spaceship that's like a sphere like this, you wouldn't notice anything weird. Everything would be fine for you. So let's do an example here, <laughs> like this image of a rocket. <laughs> so you're flying in a spaceship and you're going 0.8 C as measured by someone on Earth. And you measure your spaceship, so you think your spaceship is 18 meters long. Let's just say this is you and your spaceship. You measure the spaceship to be 18 meters long. Because you measure that, that is the proper length. Right? Because you're measuring the spaceship. To you, the spaceship is at rest. See, to you, the spaceship isn't moving. So because of that, then that's going to be what we call the proper length. So I'm going to put that down so we know that L0 is going to be 18 meters. And we're going to say, well, how long will the ship appear to someone on Earth? So again, now we have a situation where someone's watching you from Earth. There we go. And they're watching you. Oh, whoops, I think I drew an extra leg, huh? Uh, so there we go, someone on Earth, they're watching. I don't know why their neck is so long. I don't know what's going on. I'm clearly not an artist. Uh, and this is you on your spaceship here. There we go. So how long will you appear to them? So in other words, we're going to use this equation right here. L is L0 over gamma. So let's maybe write that down. That tells the examiner you know what you're doing. So there we go. So if we do this, then what are we trying to solve for? We're trying to find L, the length that someone on Earth is going to see you appear to be. In this case, you're going to solve for L, so it's just going to be L0, which is 18, over gamma. I guess the next problem is, how do we find gamma? Well, we put in the equation, gamma is 1 over 1 minus V squared over C squared, and take the square root there. So what do we do here? Let's see. We do 1 over 1 minus, and this time it's 0 0.8 C, all that squared over C squared, square root. And if you're used to doing this, of course, you'll skip a few steps. I just want to show you again how it works. So we don't forget, we have to do 0.8 squared times c squared. And 0.8 squared is 0 0.64. That's going to be c squared over c squared. Good news, the c's cancel out. That's the whole reason why we have these awesome units. So we don't have to actually put in the speed of light anywhere. Well, the 1 minus 0 0.64, that's 1 over 0 0.36. Uh, whoops, square rooted, of course. So maybe I'll use my calculator for that because I need to know this. So what's the square root of 0.36? Uh, oh, I should have known that. That's 0.6, of course. Uh, but what's 1 over that? That I didn't know. So I get that gamma is 1 point, let's say, 6.7 to 2 decimals. Here. So then that means then that my length will be, let's see, it'll be 18 over gamma, which in this case is 1.67. So let me do 18 divided by that answer. I end up with a length of 10.8 meters. 
I'm being a little bit sloppy with significant figures here because I only gave you 0.8c. I should have given you a second number. Actually, even a third one, but oh well. Uh, so here's what happens then. You are going to end up appearing to be 10.8 meters long. See that? So someone who's watching you on Earth, they're gonna they can take measurements so then, you know, and you know remotely. They can they can measure how long you appear to be. They can do that by knowing your distance and by knowing you know your size, your apparent size. They can work out the trigonometry and figure out ah you must be 10.8 meters long. When actually you know if you stopped your spaceship, we go hi, come measure my ship. It's like oh that's weird. It's 18 meters long. So that's why sometimes we call things like uh, later on in the HL stuff, especially we're going to be talking about things like rest mass, which is what's your mass if you're sitting at rest, because as you approach the speed of light, your mass appears to be something different. Um, so in this case right here, your, your 18 meter long spaceship is going to appear to be 10.8 meters long. See, it seems like your length has contracted, doesn't it? You appear to have contracted your length. Uh, now there's uh, this famous uh, example. I just found a picture of it, but I mean, it's uh, they often ask something like this, where the question could be something like, um, "Okay, you're flying in a spaceship, and you fly in this magical barn." It's always this dumb example like this, but it's it's an interesting thing. So here's the idea behind it: is what if the barn itself is 1.6 meters long? Okay, that's the length of the barn, but you are in a spaceship. Let's just say this is a spaceship right here, and your spaceship is two meters long. It's a pretty short spaceship, right? In this case, they see a pole, but it could be whatever, right? Uh, we could add a zero to everything, but um, let's just say, so you're in a very small spaceship of only two meters long, and the barn is 1.6 meters uh, long. Now it's a magical barn because uh, the doors of the barn can sort of open and close, and they open and close sort of instantaneously, so they can basically open and close without any delay. The question then could be, what does your speed have to be in order for your spaceship to be able to fit in the barn? In other words, how fast do you have to go till you're going to be able to, you know, for a split moment in time, you could actually have both barn doors closed and you'd still be in the barn. So really what we're looking for is, you know, how fast would you have to go here? So in other words, that would be the question. What would need to be V? Now we actually know L and L0. Let's see, see if we can figure those out. This is one of those examples. I, don't, uh, I wasn't really going to do the whole thing, but maybe I can. Yes, yeah, we have the time, I think. So let's just see here. Now, which length is which? The length of the spaceship, that's going to be your proper length. So that's going to be two meters. This right here is going to be the length uh, that you're going to need to appear. You're going to need to appear to be 1.6 meters long. So let's use the equation again. L equals L0 over gamma. We'll use that one, okay? So we'll use that equation, L equals L0 over gamma. So in this case right here, then what we're gonna do is we're going to have uh, this equation. Let me just start figuring it out here. So I have L equals, well, wait, never mind. I know L, don't I? I know that L is 1.6. I have 1.6, I can't seem to write today. 1.6 equals uh, two over gamma. Therefore, I can say that gamma, if I put the gamma up top and this one here down there, is 2 over 1.6, which is, let's see here, so 2 over 1.6, that's 1.25. So here's what I need to do. I need to get gamma to be 1.25. But the question is, what's V? What's my speed needed to do this? So here's where I need to be a little bit sneaky with the math here. And it's going to be a little bit annoying, but we can do this. So if we set gamma, which is equal to 1.25, we've got to set that equal to what gamma actually is, which is 1 over 1 minus uh, v squared over c squared, all that square rooted. This looks like a big mess, and it kind of is. So I'll show you a little bit quickly what we do. We can take this whole mess here, which is on the bottom. We can put it on the other side on the top, and then we can make the 1.25 on the bottom. So in other words, I could swap them I'm using some algebra here. So I can say this thing right here is equal to 1 over 1.25. That I could say. And then I could uh, square both sides to get rid of the square root. So now I have 1 minus v squared over c squared equals, well, whatever 1 over 1.25 is, that's 0.8. And I would square that, and then I get 0.64. Okay, now we're talking. I can take my minus uh, v squared over c squared, I can move it to the right to make it positive, and I can make my 0.64 move it to the left. Uh, so that might be a good idea. Um, let's see here. Now, uh, I just want to make sure, yeah, can I, yeah, so this should work. So then I could do a 1 minus 0. Point, oops, sorry, won't be 1 minus, will it? Uh, 1 minus 0. 0.64, that should 
3.36. That's going to equal v squared over c squared. And then if I want to do the square root of that, because I want to get v over c. I don't want v squared over c squared. See that? Because I could also rewrite it like this. Actually, let me just go like this. Way. I'll see if I can just delete just the squares. Yes. There we go. So it's the same thing as this. Those are both squared. And because of that, then I can take the square root of both sides. Square root of 0.36, that's just going to be 0 0.6. So 0 0.6 is going to be v over c. Therefore, v is 0 0.6. I'm going to move the c over. There's my answer. So what this means is that if you can fly your spaceship, which is 2 meters long as you measure it, if you can fly it at 0.6 the speed of light compared to someone on Earth, let's just say, um, then that means that you will appear to be 1.6 meters long, which means you can actually fit in that barn technically. So you can see how we can work with this here. So here we solve for V, and the other example, we uh, knew V, we were trying to solve for L. So you see, you can solve it backwards and forwards, and all that is to explain how we can actually use um, special relativity. The main you know, results that are really interesting to most people are this time dilation and length contraction.